All right, welcome back for another Parscore tutorial. And this is probably my favorite of all the, the Parscore system. Yes, it's simple in grading and simple in tracking, and uh, but it's item analysis, it's uh, process and being able to analyze each exam question and to determine if the test was a good test or not based on uh, the student responses. So in order to determine the analysis or find your reports you're going to as we've done before you're going to log into Parscore double click on the icon type in your code and then you're going to highlight your class again and you're going to open. Again, you can double click or open. You're going to back it up, say OK, and then it says good job. You backed it up. And now it's going to open up into your system. And now I actually have a student logged in here, my fake student score. Uh, they didn't do so well. They got um, exam, they got a four uh, <coughs> out of. I'm not sure how many points on that one, uh, but it shows their grade. Don't worry about the grade. Don't even worry about the score necessarily here. Um, that's all going to be plugged into end grade uh, at a later point. But at this point, you go up to the options for the or reports. You go up to reports for the different list of reports. And the four that I like the most and I think are most beneficial are your item analysis reports your roster report, your score distribution report, and your student test report. Uh, there's a number of other ones in here, but those are the four uh, main reports that I think are beneficial. And I'm going to start with the item analysis report. We just click on item analysis, then it pops up a box here. So if I can scoot in for you a little bit. And you, if you have multiple exams, you select the exam you want and then the version that you want. If you have multiple versions, you do have to run the item analysis for each of the different versions. You have a report type, just standard is what's there. And then from A through D or A through E, you can select how many uh, test letters are typically on each of the questions. Um, and I typically add A through D. Uh, since that's the majority, I have four uh, option multiple choice questions. And then you can print or you can preview. Either one is fine. Um, I typically print these out and they print to the RICO uh, in Denise's office. Um, just for now to show you what it looks like, I'm going to click preview. And it shows uh, what your print off is going to look like as well. It's going to give the total number of points possible. It's going to give a median score, a mean score, your reliability coefficient, high score, low score, a number of different just data points there. The one I like um, is a reliability coefficient and the KR20. And what that does is it gives me an idea based on um, that score of how reliable my exam was what we want is around 0.6 to 0.7 um, as that number strays low or high it's saying that the exam is either too easy or too hard and then it gives individual uh, question responses as well okay one two three four five and it's going to tell you the total number correct and then it's going to tell you the students in the upper 27 percent uh, how many of them percentage-wise got it correct, and then the lower 27%. And the upper and lower has to do with the total score that, that those students receive. So you have a few students that get 100%, they're going to be in the upper 27. You get students that fail, they're going to be in the lower 27. It gives you an idea of hopefully the percentage in the upper is higher than the lower. If you notice that the lower percentage, the lower 27, is a higher score, uh, that might lean you to believe that the exam maybe was that exam question maybe wasn't real strong um, that the lower percentage was actually getting a better grade on that question than the, the upper percentage 
shows that maybe there was some confusing verbiage or something like that. It shows you the correct answer, it shows you point by serial, and then it gives you the score responses, how many people answered each of the selected options individually. The point by serial is also a good uh, analysis point. You want that typically around 0.2 to 0.3. Uh, the higher the score uh, shows you is a little more difficult. The lower the score um, tends to uh, show you that it maybe was a poor question. Uh, the point by serial, the higher, higher, higher it gets, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, doesn't mean a bad question. It just means maybe you want to go back and look at it. Um, and you do want that to be a a higher number. I mean, above 0.3 is great too. Uh, once you get down into the 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.15, uh, that's showing you that it may not have been a uh, reliable question or a good question. So uh, you want to go back and look at those as well. If you go back and you look at the test option question and uh, you say, nope, it was a good question, then leave it alone. Uh, but it also gives you an idea on how to maybe uh, update or fix exam questions for future uh, exams. That is the uh, item analysis option report. I'm going to show you the next one is uh, if you move this around here if you go up and you click the reports and I go down to score distribution report uh, collect uh, click on the specific score the exam number you want and then I like the histogram report and then I click preview again what that does is it you won't see a, a bell curve with this because it only had one student but what this does is it gives you a histogram report so you can look to see you know a whole bunch of failures and not many people did well or everybody did really well and nobody failed or was there a nice bell curve um, and bell curve isn't a perfect analysis uh, but it gives you an idea that across the range of students that your exam was probably a, a pretty decent exam. And that's all that that report is, but I like looking at that one. The next report that I select is the uh, student, the roster report. And again, you select selected categories, exam one. I also go to report layout and uh, two decimal point score format and I sort by last name and then I click preview and again it'll give you their overall score and this is a way you can easily enter grades into end grade is, uh, but what you have to do is it gives you a point system so you have to actually enter percentages um, and so four divided by six gives you 0.66 or 66 percent. There isn't an option for percentage grading, unfortunately. Um, that would make it a lot nicer, but it's still a lot faster there. And the last report that I print off is the student test report. Again, click on the exam, exam one. Under details, click standard test report. You can put one student per page or two students per page and then cut them in half so you're not wasting as much paper. I sort by last name and then I also block out a few digits of their um, ID number and you can choose to put the answer key on their sheet as long as you collect those sheets back uh, that would be perfectly fine and uh, you can put their test grade and cumulative score and whatever you want on there but I typically only select print answer key and print test uh, grade and then you click preview and here's what the student would see they'd see their name they'd see points possible raw score is the overall exam score and then they have the objective or the bubbles as well as the subjective answers and they got one of those and then it gives the score of a 66%. And you can use that to enter in your grades through end grade. Um, makes that easy as well. Then down here it shows you the test key. 
if you selected that option, as well as their answers. And uh, a response description up here as far as if it's a hashtag or if the option was blank. A dash means it's correct and a letter means that's what the student put uh, and it was an incorrect option. What I do when I print off these student uh, test reports, I'll cut them up, I'll give them back to the students and I'll allow them to look at the exam for the purpose of learning from their mistakes. But what I do um, set up in class is a very strict environment because I do select for them to be able to see the test key answers. Uh, so I'm walking around the room, phones are up front as always, um, no pencils on the desk because sometimes I'll give them back the bubble sheet. I do allow them to have pens on their desk though because they can't change a mark um, with a pen on the Scantron sheet uh, without me noticing. So pencils away, desks are clear, and I give them back their exams and this student report sheet um, so they can look through their exams for a few minutes and see what they missed wrong and ask questions and I give them rationale as to why they were wrong or why they were right, um, different things like that. So you can set up the environment for your exam review however you please, but that's how I've uh, found to be very efficient and beneficial for the students. Hope this tutorial has been also beneficial for you and please feel free to ask any questions you might have. Have a good one. Thanks.